Imagine a country where the population is shrinking, aging, and dying faster than it can replace itself. A country where young people are delaying or avoiding marriage and parenthood, and where the government is desperately trying to encourage more births. A country where the future looks bleak and uncertain. This is not a dystopian scenario. This is South Korea. In 2020, South Korea's total fertility rate, or the average number of children a woman has in her lifetime, fell to a record low of 0.78. That's less than half of the replacement level of 2.1, which is needed to maintain a stable population. It also means that most couples in South Korea are having only one child, or none at all. But why is this happening, and what are the consequences for South Korea and the world? In this video, we'll explore the causes and effects of South Korea's fertility crisis and what can be done to reverse it. South Korea's fertility decline is not a recent phenomenon. It has been going on for more than six decades since the country's rapid economic and social transformation after the Korean War. In 1960, South Korea's fertility rate was almost six children per woman, similar to many developing countries at the time. But by 1984, it had dropped below the replacement level. And by 2020, it had reached the lowest point in human history. This is a remarkable achievement, considering that it took the United States about 170 years to go from six to two children per woman. But how did South Korea do it so fast? There are many factors that contributed to South Korea's fertility decline, but some of the most important ones are economic development and urbanization. As South Korea became more industrialized and urbanized, people moved from rural areas to cities where living costs are higher and space is limited. This reduced the demand for large families, as children were no longer needed for farm labor or old age support. Instead, children became an economic burden requiring more education and care. Education and career opportunities. As South Korea invested heavily in education, especially for women, more people pursued higher education and professional careers. This increased the opportunity cost of having children, as women had to balance their work and family responsibilities. It also delayed the age of marriage and childbearing, as people spent more time in school and in the labor market. Cultural and social changes as South Korea became more exposed to Western values and lifestyles, people adopted more individualistic and secular attitudes and less traditional and religious ones. This weakened the influence of family and social norms such as filial piety, patriarchy, and Confucianism that used to encourage large families and early marriage. It also increased the diversity and freedom of personal choices such as cohabitation, divorce, and singlehood. These factors, along with others, such as the availability of contraception and abortion, the decline of arranged marriages, and the reason of environmental awareness, have led to a dramatic change in South Korea's fertility behavior and preferences. But while these changes have brought many benefits to South Korea, such as higher living standards, gender equality, and human development, they have also created some serious challenges for the country's future. One of the most obvious and immediate consequences of South Korea's low fertility rate is the shrinking and aging of its population. According to the United Nations, South Korea's population peaked at about 51.8 million in 2020 and is projected to decline to about 39 million by 2050 and 18 million by 2100. That's a loss of more than half of its population in 80 years. At the same time, South Korea's population is getting older as the proportion of elderly people increases and the proportion of young people decreases. In 2020, about 16% of South Korea's population was 65 or older and 12% was 14 or younger. By 2050, these figures are expected to change to 46% and 9%, respectively. That means that almost half of South Korea's population will be senior citizens and only 1 in 10 will be children. This demographic shift has profound implications for South Korea's economy, society, and security. What are the implications of South Korea's demographic shift? Some of the major implications are economic slowdown and stagnation. As South Korea's labor force shrinks and ages, its productivity and competitiveness will decline, affecting its economic growth and innovation. It will also face a fiscal crisis as it will have to spend more on pensions, healthcare, and social services for the elderly while collecting less tax revenue from the working population. 
This will increase the public debt and reduce the public investment, social problems, and inequality. As South Korea's family structure changes, it will face more social problems, such as loneliness, depression, and suicide among the elderly, and child poverty and neglect among the single-parent households. It will also face more inequality, as the gap between the rich and the poor, the urban and the rural, and the young and the old will widen. This will undermine the social cohesion and trust and increase the social conflict and unrest. Security threats and challenges. As South Korea's population declines and ages, its military and diplomatic capabilities will weaken, making it more vulnerable to external threats and challenges such as North Korea, China, and Japan. It will also face more internal threats and challenges such as terrorism, cyber attacks, and natural disasters. This will require more cooperation and coordination with its allies and partners, and more investment and innovation in its defense and security systems. These implications are not inevitable, but they are likely, unless South Korea takes action, to address its fertility crisis and its demographic challenges. So, what can South Korea do to reverse its fertility decline and cope with its demographic shift? These strategies are not mutually exclusive, but complementary and interrelated. They require the cooperation and participation of all stakeholders, such as the government, the private sector, civil society, and the individuals. They also require the vision and leadership of the policymakers, the experts, and the influencers. South Korea has the lowest fertility rate in the world, and this has serious implications for its economy, society, and security. The main reasons for the low fertility rate are the high costs of childcare and housing, the gender and social inequality, the pressure to succeed in education and work, and the changing culture and mindset of the people. To reverse this trend, the government needs to implement long-term policies that support families, such as providing affordable and quality childcare, housing, and education, as well as promoting gender equality and work-life balance. Otherwise, South Korea may face a future of population decline, aging, and stagnation. But what do you think? Do you agree or disagree with the analysis and the suggestions in this video? What are some other factors or solutions that you would like to add or discuss? Please share your thoughts and opinions in the comments section below. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. And don't forget to hit the bell icon to get notified when we upload new content.